The most uh, easy going of all the jockeys in Australia. Uh, pleased to hear that he's had such great success during that overseas stint. As he said, it's a, a tough old grind trying to claw his way back up the ladder here in Sydney. But he's not afraid of a bit of hard yakka and he's got heaps of natural talent. So we wish him well. I'll never forget the day he won the Silver Slipper Stakes at Rose Hill on that little filly from Burke. Kisses for Cathy. By gee, it was a romantic story. Probably Neil's uh, best win, although he did win a Group 1 mayor's race on Strawberry Fair at Rose Hill, the equivalent of the Coolmore Classic. Whatever it was in that era, that race has had six or seven different sponsors. Now Rick Wynn is the last one to move into the gates and they're all set and ready for dispatch. Amber lights flashing on top. They're off. Good start. Came away in a nice even line. Goodwood has to be hard ridden to try and hold a forward spot but can't. And pushing through to lead is Bubbly over Gdansk and getting through into a good spot is Countess Katia. You could throw a blanket over the whole bunch though. There's about four lengths from first to last at the 1000 mark and Bubbly is now joined by Goodwood on the outside. Gdansk is running third. Straight through is fourth on the inside of Mars King and Countess Katia got back a little bit on the inside of Rickwin past the 800 mark and Goodwood hard ridden has drawn clear of Bubbly and Gdansk he's trying to cross them with Goodwood in fourth spot straight through on the inside of Mars King Countess Katia well back with Rickwin on his outside as they come up towards the turn 500 meters out Goodwood the leader but is well and truly off the bit Gdansk again getting up on the inside to almost join Goodwood three deep as Bubbly as they come around the turn Mars King has to go four wide straight through tracks them into the straight Countess Katia near the fence is under heavy pressure and Rick Wynn is on her outside as they turn Gdansk and Goodwood are together straightening up straight through into the clear is under heavy pressure further out Bubbly and Mars King on the extreme outside not many runners but a big finish it's Bubbly and Mars King on the extreme outside from straight through Bubbly has the head in front as they get near home and Bubbly thrown over the wire wins it about a neck to straight through and a head away Mars King on the outside Goodwood weakened out of a place followed by Countess Katia and Rick Wynn and Gdansk is last of all. Bubbly, number seven, Rodney Quinn is going to pay $13.90 and $4.70. $13.90 and $4.70. Now straight through I think we'll get second which gives Grant Cooksley three wins and two close seconds from his five rides so far. Straight through would pay $1.70 and Mars King on the outside insufficient starters for a third tote um, I better have a look at this replay and uh, check the likelihood of the second placing but it looked like the inside one to me as they hit the line although it's hard to tell because uh, you've got bubbly now looking at that Mars King will get second looking at that one so we'll stand by and see. 55 and a half so a lot of some riding today but uh, yeah the 62 and a half I've got to use a bit of lead there Good luck today. Thanks. Richard Jolly as we go to Queenbian. Gold Tarlac, Broken Hearts not too far away. Tom's gift ridden hard. Fear and Ellie drifting back, followed by attendance going right around the field and will be up near the lead shortly. Miss Klasik drops out to second last and Sammy at the tail of the field. As they race up the side towards the back, they've got about 1,300 to go. Tom's gift has joined in the lead by attendance. Two and a half off third, Gold Tarlac, followed then by Give My Regards, Vibrant Rancho. Getting back centre field, Broken Hearts a length or so, then Fear and Ellie followed by Miss Klasik. And four or five, Sammy at the tail of the field. Down the back they race, inside the 1,000 meter mark this pair having a good go out in front it's Tom's gift on the inside of attendance four off in third ridden a bit along there was the gold Tarlac a further break of about a length and three quarters vibrant Rancho settling down well then give my regards further back to broken hearts now towards the inside fear and Ellie two behind those miss classic gaining ground and a long break then Sammy last of all as they race up towards the turn inside the 600 Tom's gift again draws clear now gold Tarlac moves to second running on attendance has had enough vibrant Rancho followed further back then broken hearts Further back in the field, Fear and Ellie followed then by Miss Klasik who switched wide. Attendance dropped out very quickly and Sammy at the tail of the field. Around the turn, 300 to go, Tom's gift is the leader. Gold Tarlac moved up on the outside. Further out in the track was Vibrant Rancho. Miss Klasik is coming down the outside and Fear and Ellie getting right up along the inside. Out the 200, it's Fear and Ellie down towards the inside, the leader. Out wide, Miss Klasik is trying hard, followed then by Vibrant Rancho. But Fear and Ellie drew clear getting towards the line. Miss Klasik is flashing home but the post is too close. And Fear and Ellie has beaten Miss Classique, third vibrant rancho, then Gold Tarlac, further back to give my regards, Tom's gift, then Sammy, well back to Broken Heart, second last, and a long last was attendance. Good ride, Fear and Ellie, right up along the inside. Ridden by Kevin Sweeney.
Number one, Fiorinelli. Won at Goulburn prior to today, trained by Libby Maxwell at Braidwood. A grey gilding four by Foscarini out of Arjon, raced by Mrs. VK Thompson, Mrs. S. O'Sullivan, Ms. Y. Layton. The numbers are official, one, four and ten. Fear and Ellie first. A number four, Miss Classic, Greg Farris second. And third, number ten, Vibrant Rancho, the rider, Jeff Penzer. So the numbers are official, one, four, ten, one, thirty-six, ninety-five. They're going to jump early at Alice Springs. Ninety seconds early, in fact. So if you didn't get on, it's not our fault. Light not on as yet. Al Qatar stands well, so does Espalier. And Countryman. Don't mind if I do. Fronts up nicely. Flush boy in the all black. And the jaw towards the outside with uh, Duntroon Lad and Where's the Logic? Now the light is on for the Ansett Invitation Stakes. 1,400, stand by. Set, racing. Al Qatar missed it by two or three lengths. Espalia and Countryman, the first two to get going. From El Major out deep, going forward very quickly. Tats fire just behind them with Don't Mind If I Do, Fiery Crest. Duntroon Lad out deep is starting to work forward up towards the lead and Where's the Logic is going with him. They've moved out by two or three lengths then to Sandboy from Don't Mind If I Do getting well back with Fiery Crest, Plush Boy and El Qatar being very slow to leave is back at the tail of proceedings up towards the 900 metre point. El Major went to the front now from Countryman. Over on the inside of Spellier getting a nice run a length away came Where's the Logic? Then further back to Tats Fire as they work down the side of the track. Sandboy just behind them in front of him was Duntroon Lad. Further back along the inside came Fiery Crest, two or three lengths away. Then came Flush Boy from Al Qatar about to take off back towards the tail of the field. And don't mind if I do his last of all. About 450 to go. Countryman in the centre's got his head in advance of Al Major. Over on the rails behind them, a Spellier under pressure. Duntroon Lad coming into it very quickly. And where's the logic? Sweeping the field out deep on. On the track further back to Sandboy Countryman in front at the 250 Duntroon led the challenger on the outside and then further back came where's the logic from Tatsfire Countryman in front trying hard the outside Duntroon lad Countryman holding on from Duntroon lad and Countryman a half length to Duntroon lad Tatsfire about two lengths away third not a bad run then Sandboy Al Qatar made good ground late Further back, Espalier appeared to have every possible hope in the run. In behind him, where's the logic? Plus, boy, El Majur knocked up from Don't Mind If I Do, and last of all was Fiery Crest. Good strong win, that, to Countryman. Number one, written by Brett Marshall, the South Australian jockey. One of the first to get going, always up near the front, Espalier over on the inside, El Majur the outside. The challenges came thick and fast down the home stretch, but uh, Country Man has been too good for Duntroon Lad, who tried very hard to wear him down, but uh, wasn't quite up to it on the day. And Tats Fire has run a reasonable race at good odds to uh, end up in third spot, and he's number nine, written by Gary Evans. So the South Australian jockey. Brett Marshall, who uh, rode a great race on Stray County here on uh, Saturday to lead all the way. And a good job again today on Countryman, defeating uh, fellow South Australian Dwayne Dunn, who rode Duntroon Lad. And Gary Evans from Rockhampton has uh, run third on Tats Fire. After race five, the Ansett Australia Invitation Stakes. Well, there it was, number one Countryman. Is a leader's track at this stage, certainly at Alice Springs. And... Uh, we're now only one race off the Alice Springs Cup. It's due at 5.30 Eastern Time. Uh, as that winner, Countryman and Brett Marshall. And Bala, a Luke Court and Zadanska. Private Eye drawn down close to the inside in barrier two. Luke Sharp is facing up squarely for Bill Aspros. Now they're set and they're off and running. Good start and towards the outside one of the first away is Pirate's Yarn who's going to vie for the early lead. In fact he will head them off. Centennial and Look Sharp are away quickly and Unclaimed is getting into a handy spot. There's another one scooting through to join those leaders right on's hope followed by Mr Best and Private Eye midfield with Zadanska and then a Luke Court and Ricky and Shambhala back last at the 800. They're going very quickly. Right on's hope went to the lead over Look Sharp. Centennial in the all 
course, Cerise on the outside, unclaimed near the fence, getting a nice run. Then Pirate Yarn in the pale green colours with the red cap, pushed along as they near the turn. So is Mr Best, Private Eye on the fence, in need of a bit of luck now, followed by Zadanska further back, a Luke Court, and then Ricky and Shambhala tailed off as they come around the turn. Right on's Hope is first into the straight. He's well away from the fence. Plenty of room on the inside for Look Sharp as they straighten up. Unclaimed, hooked out, Private Eye going for the cutaway, and he's starting to wind up past the 200. Look Sharp went to the lead under his big weight. Private Eye getting right up on the fence is a very big danger. Private Eye coming at Look Sharp. Private Eye with a huge pull in the weights. Too good and raced away to beat Look Sharp. A Luke Court has run third, then Pirate Yarn, followed by Ride On's Hope. Ricky unclaims Zadanska. Further back, Shambhala, Mr Best, and dropping out to run last is Centennial. Well, he had a massive weight advantage, of course, with the two and a half kilo claim for Cameron Swan. He was in receipt of six and a half kilos from Look Sharp, and uh, Private Eye was able to pick that horse up and then race away to win easily. Private Eye, ridden by Cameron Swan and ridden very patiently, pays a dividend of $2.80, $1.40 the place. Look Sharp did a good job under that big weight. He pays $1.70. And a Luke Court third will pay a dividend of 3.30. So the numbers are 7, 1, and 2. Totes, 2.80, 1.40, 1.70, 3.30. Springs uh, Cup Carnival. And uh, having his first visit to Alice Springs is uh, Caulfield trainer Mark Riley, who joins us now. How are you, Mark? Uh, good, thanks, Hill. Actually, it's not my first. I, I rode here about 10 years ago. I came up for the right. invitation race. So you had to get back. Long gap between, though. Well, it's a long time, yes, but it's uh, time worthwhile spending to come back here. How long have you been training for now? Uh, I've been training now about seven years. And you uh, have an Adelaide operation, but I believe you've scaled that down somewhat. Uh, just at the moment, yeah, we've just broken things down for another for a month, and then we'll start building things back up again. So how many horses have you got? Well, you don't know. Uh, well, no, we've got them all over the place at the moment, but we've most probably keep about 25 to 30 horses in a core field and uh, just spread them out from there. When did you think that the Alice Springs Cup would be a good race for Gold Manor? Well, we only purchased the horse about a month ago um, when he came on the market and uh, it seemed an ideal race to bring the horse up here and he'll go on from here to Darwin. So you actually purchased the horse with the view to racing Alice and Darwin or other reasons? Well, that was the main reason to, to buy the horse. The, the people that own the horse are from here and uh, Alice Springs and Darwin, so, that, so they wanna, they'll take the horse up, up to there and keep him up here for the carnivals, hopefully taking him back to Adelaide. We've got a shot of uh, Gold Manor in just a moment uh, walking around. He just paraded past with uh, an interesting uh, apparatus on the face, the fly veil. They seem to enjoy it. Yeah, well, uh, no one enjoys flies in their eyes, or well, it doesn't seem to be. And uh, these, they do a great job to keep the flies out of their eyes and uh, uh, helps them uh, keep them a little bit calmer as well. Some of the jockeys are saying that uh, it's a leader's track today, but uh, the 2,000 metre race certainly sorts a few of them out in the cup. How do you see the cup being run and where will your horse be positioned? Well, we've just got to be a little bit careful with him because he has a tendency to uh, miss the kick, as he did here last start, and they saw him. He ran on very well from there on, and uh, I don't think it's going to be a disadvantage over 2,000 today anyway if he gets back. They'll most probably go hard. Mm. So, uh, well, if he has, he has any luck through the run, he's going to be hard to beat as well. All right, well, good to see you, and uh, best of luck today with Gold Manor. Thanks very much, Sheldon. Good on you, Mark. Mark Riley, visiting from Caulfield all the way to Alice Springs. So we welcome our next guest onto Sky Channel, and uh, that is Adelaide's leading rider, Dwayne Dunn. Dwayne, uh, how are you? Good, thanks. I've copped a bit of dirt, but uh, things are going well. How far are you uh, back in the field to cop that, no doubt? Yeah, well, uh, it was only the second race that I really copped it, and I copped a big... Uh, Big clod coming at me about the height under metre mark. I thought it was Ayers Rock, it was that big and I couldn't <laughs> miss it. But uh, no, they do uh, get in a bit of trouble when you're back. You get so much dirt in your face and uh, the other two rides have raced near the speed. So I've been uh, glad to be there. You've uh, built yourself up to be Adelaide's leading rider. You're riding in uh, sensational fashion. But you uh, had an injury uh, a while ago. What happened? Yeah, I had a race fall at uh, Mount Gambier. Um, I was in hospital for about five or six days. Um, I was knocked out and uh, I crushed a vertebrae in my back, which took a little bit of time to recover, but it's uh, starting to come good now. You're on uh, Drydell uh, in the big one of the day, uh, number 10. Uh, Viv Oldfield, one of his runners. Uh, have you heard much about the horse? No, I haven't, but uh, looking at his form, it's just ready to go into a race like this. Um, 
once again, I hope I can race near the speed most of the way because get back, you've got a lot of trouble and uh, you've got a, so much work to do. What's coming up for Duane? Because we've got the uh, Adelaide Cup Carnival in full swing now. Yes, we certainly have. Um, I'm actually going up for appeal against my suspension on Thursday. Hopefully uh, things will go my way there and uh, I can race, uh, race in the two days of Goodwood Handicap and Adelaide Cup Day because I have got some nice rides, but uh, it's just a matter of whether I'm riding or not. You were actually riding under a stay of proceedings today. What did you actually do to get suspended? Um, it was a horse I won on at uh, Victoria Park, Bosca. Um, they believe that I shifted in. I, I still um, plead that I'm not guilty and uh, I kept a straight line and the inside horses came out. So that's up to the tribunal to um, determine whether I'm right or I'm wrong. So I hope they go my way because they're the two biggest days of racing that mm. I'm looking forward to. You'd hate to miss them. Well, good luck today. Thank you. And with the appeal. There's Dwayne Dunn, Adelaide's leading rider, as we go back to you, Rod. Thanks, Hilton. Uh, that's Hilton Dunn. On aces. Uh, open handicap of 1,200 metres. Here's the old quick hands himself, Tony Campbell. Boxed and ready, and away they go. That was a perfect start. Bob's boy went back to the tail when they hit the ground. Stray Bullion written hard as the leader. Big Matt moves up on the outside, followed by Stressful Demand. Mio Bibi, there's a keen race for the lead. Quick Hands not too far away, followed further back behind those short sheeted. Then Golf Circuit, Aimskay drifting back in the field, Flash Midasla. And last of all was Bob's boy. They're flying out in front inside the 800, where Stray Bullion about a half a length in front of Big Matt, going up three wide, short sheeted. A break behind those Quick Hands, followed by Stressful Stressful demand, golf circuit, a further break in the field, Aimsgay as they race up towards the turn, Mio Bibi drifting back in the field, Cessation's got a long way back, followed then by Bob's boy, and Flash Me Dazzler at the tail of the field as they swing up towards the turn, 400 to go, Stray Bullion is the leader, about a length and a half in front of Big Matt, around the field, quick hands running on, followed by Short Sheeted, golf circuit down towards the inside, a break behind those, Stressful demand, and the next one was Aimsgay, followed by Bob's boy, Stray Bullion kicked away at the 200, Stray Bullion nicely clear, golf circuit into the clears running on, Quick hands wider out was Bob's boy. Stray Bullion getting tired. Golf circuit, quick hands. And Bob's boy coming quickly. Golf circuit raced up, put the head in front. Bob's boy flying. But golf circuit may have held on. Maybe golf circuit just ahead of Bob's boy. Now close for third. Stray Bullion out wide was Flash Medazler. In behind those quick hands, followed by Big Matt. Short sheeted, couldn't go on. Further back to Amesgay, followed by Stressful Demand. Mia Bibi and Cessation, one of the last to cross the line. Well, not much in this. Golf circuit appeared to have won the race and uh, it's returned to form today, golf circuit. She was very, very disappointing when last in work. First run back today, Bob's boy dived on the line and, oh, gee, there's not much in it. Maybe golf circuit, but the angle here is inclined to be a little bit tricky. Very close between golf circuit, Bob's boy, it was back last approaching the turn. It was a long, long way back indeed. Uh, now let's have a look at these. Uh, golf circuit on the tote, eight ninety and three dollars, and the other one in the photo, Bob's boy, six thirty and two dollars sixty. But uh, in a keenly contested race, well, it's one number one's gone into the frame. Golf circuit's number has already gone up, according to the board. It's one in a photo, one ten point twenty the time. He was Hilton. Thanks, Rod. One of Alice Springs' leading trainers is Viv Oldfield. He's built up his team nicely since the last time we were here uh, last year. And he has a runner in the upcoming event carrying 62 and a half kilos, that being number one, uh, Corregidor. Viv, uh, welcome to the Sky Channel microphone once again. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you. It's up here, Hilton. It's good to see Sky Channel supporting us. Good on you. Now, Corregidor, how long have you had this horse? Uh, when did we get him? About probably February, April last year. And uh, he went so well that you took him to Adelaide and then to Melbourne. He, I think he even ran in a listed race and at Sandown went quite well. Yeah, he ran fourth to cut up rough and uh, Zacharina was a you know, pretty uh, good field. I think Quick Fix ran third, but yeah, that was yeah. probably a little bit better for him, but it was a pretty good run. Yeah. When you purchased the horse, was that the plan? Did, did, did you, he surprise you with, with his, uh, his form to go to Adelaide and race so well? Uh, no, I think he's always been a pretty good horse, you know, from he was a three-year-old on and, uh, and he's raced against pretty good company all his life. Um, and he just probably started to taper off a fraction, but uh, yeah, he's you know he's got ability, but yeah, you know, he's a little bit moody, but yeah, he goes all right. He was trained by Bart Cummings and owned by Wolf Blass. Uh, did you find it hard to get a horse from Wolf Blass, or did he, did he part with Corregidor quite easily? Oh no, he wasn't really keen on uh, getting rid of him. Um, he wanted to keep the horse because he knew he had ability. Uh, but yeah, Wolf's been a pretty good supporter of the territory racing, and mm. you know we've done a bit of badgering with him, and you know eventually uh, he got sick of me arguing with him and decided to let him let us have him. Yeah. So you reckon you got a cheap horse? 
Oh, well, he has been now. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I think Wolf's done his best. And, like, he's, he's basically sort of lots of, like, donate money to really for giving your horses of this calibre for not all that dear prices, you know? Now, he's on the Goodwood uh, Handicap Trail, this horse, Corregidor, which I think is Saturday week. Uh, how will he go today? Oh, probably, um, you know, the racing looks like it's panned out that the leader's got a really um, the best chance at the moment. So, you know, unfortunately, he'll probably get back in the field. And with his weight, I think he'll find it a little bit difficult to come home over the top of him. But, I mean, you can only hope for the best. Mm. So whatever he, he does today, he'll improve on? Uh, well, well, you'd think so. Probably like the bigger track at Moorfield. But, I mean, he also goes up in class, but he'll drop a lot in weight. He's yeah. got 50 in the Goodwood. So, I mean, he'd want to be going pretty good to beat Clang the other day if he does start. <laughs> He won't know himself in that race. Now, your three runners in the cup, you've got uh, Bow Guest, Do Right and Drydell. Which is the best of the three? Well, I think it's probably a little bit opposite to Darren. Dreedle was probably going a bit better and was a probably a bit fitter. Um, this year, uh, Bow Guest is probably going a bit better and is a little bit fitter than him. I know he's got a little bit extra weight, but uh, there isn't all that much between them. And they'll race similar. Probably Dreedle will be a bit closer to the pace than him. And, and both of them will race all right. And Do Right, he hasn't done all that much wrong either. And they're down in the weight, so... Um, yeah, hopefully they get a good run in transit mm. and they all sort of around the mark. Have you prepared these horses all their lives? No, nah, not Dreedle. I haven't. Do right only since he, after he was uh, broke down and went to the paddock for a while. And uh, but I guess I brought him before the Darwin Cup last year. Uh, Bruce Aglington had him um, originally, yeah. Right. Do right has an amazing record on this track. He must just love the place. He's had 27 starts on the track for 13 wins and nine minor placings. Yeah, he was a really good three-year-old. Like, I mean, he beat um, some reasonable horses. You know, Glacier Bay went back and won in Melbourne and one in Adelaide, uh, and he beat him quite convincingly as a three-year-old on set weights. Uh, and then he sort of his form tapered off a bit when he got chips in his knees. But yeah, he's been a, oh, a really good horse to the people that own him. Yeah. You've had no hesitation in putting the visiting riders on. No, nah, that uh, was a little bit unfortunately. Our blokes can't ride at their weight. So, uh, yeah, we um, Neil Payne, we, I get on with him right, and Simon Pry, um, well, he's not riding him actually. Uh, um, Dwayne Dunn's riding Dreedle, and uh, yeah, and they, you know, they ride well down where they come from, and you know, they ride the weight pretty comfortable with a half and to weigh, so it does help. And Archie, well, I mean, you got to put him on just to listen to him afterwards, don't you? <laughs> I think it's going to be very interesting you giving instructions in this race. I'll just tell them all to work it out for himself, I think, with the idiots. <laughs> then I can abuse them afterwards. Get to the post first. Yeah. Good on you, Viv. Always good to talk to you. And good luck with Corregidor and uh, these runners in the Cup today. And best of luck in the Goodwood. No worries, Tom. Thanks very much. Viv Oldfield, one of the leading trainers at Alice Springs. And uh, he says that Corregidor, Rod, whatever he does today, he will improve on as he heads towards the Goodwood handicap. But uh, a lot of weight to carry today. Let them work it out for themselves, then abuse them later. Taking a leaf out of the John Hawkes book of training. At uh, Wangaratta, they're getting ready uh, behind the start. Uh, Go in. Previous event going to Countryman. A good win there by that one. Now, there's... There's one to come up. Freshness is going to be the last one to go in, and it's about 20 or 30 metres away from the start. The rest of the field stand up well. They've been well behaved. Wembley stands up well near the inside with Smithy's pride. Freshness walks a bit closer to the start now. Thousand metres the trip. Oh, yeah. Now Freshness links up to the outside. They stand up well. Starter aboard his platform about to release them. Meticulous Prince stands up well, set to go. Smithy's pride the inside. Wembley stands up well, ready. Lights on, 1,000 metres, should go now. Set. One a bit toey towards the outside. County Council stands up well. Still waiting with the light on. Off and racing, good start too. Smithy's Pride jumped away fast. Zambuka Rebel missed it by a half a length. County Council jumped away fast over on the outside is going to lead them from Keys Gesture in second placing. They were followed further back by Smithy's Pride pushing up fast. They're going quickly at the 800 metre mark. Meticulate Prince is on the outside. Two lengths further back to Wembley followed by Prince Chariot at the outside. Two and a half lengths away came Freshness racing deep. 
A half a length away came over on the inside. Zambuka Rebel getting out of its ground there. Two or three lengths to Corregidor back to the rear. Racing down the side of the track. And the leader, County Council, in front, led by a half a length. Keys Jester in second placing. Third placing, Smithy's Pride around the outside. Prince Chariot with a run. Here comes Meticulous Prince about to get off the fence now. And then came Zambuka Rebel Wembley in the straight, though. And the leader kicked away. County Council, a length and a half in front. Second placing, Keys Jester followed by Smithy's Pride. The favourites coming home down the outside. County Council still the leader from Keys gesture. County Council hanging on and County Council is going to win it. County Council won it by about a, oh, a half a length on the line I'd say to in second placing Keys gesture. They were first and second pretty much near all the way. Now tight for third. Uh, maybe up there Prince Chariot along with Smithies Pride and Wembley. They were all together. They were followed by Zambuka Rebel. Followed further back by Freshness. Corregidor was never in the hunt. Beaten by his weight. Back and behind them Jack B. Quick towards the rear. One of the last to pull up was Meticulous Prince. Big result at Alice Springs, number 11, County Council, $27.60 and $4.70. Number 7, Keys Jester at $1.50. Maybe Smithy's Pride has poked through to run third, but uh, it appeared to have every chance. 11-7 and a photo at the Alice in race 6. One race to go there, the Lassiter's Hotel Casino, Alice Springs Cup. It's due at 5.30. Now, with one minute of betting time at Warwick Farm, nearly 89,000 in the wind pool, priceless asset, $8.70, supergrass, five, special express, $6.20. Grant Cooksley could get another winner here. Uh, Ru uh, then Lanza, $8.30, Rodeo Kid, $8.80, Greenfield Star, 11, Conversion, 11, Zubin, $7.70. Uh, Themes is $12. Uh, then uh, Gil Hewler, 43. Governor Pete, 20. And Jenna Gala, 201. Tappy selections for the seventh. This is the final event at Warwick Farm. He likes five Lanza, two Supergrass, three Special Express, one Priceless Asset, nine Zubin, 13 Jenna Gala. Special Express is the late mail. As they're all set to go at Warwick Farm race seven, here's John. Conversion kicked the gate, uh, leaving the birdcage. Had to be checked by the vet when he arrived at the starting point, and he's OK, unscathed, and is taking his place in the field. Big day for the Woodland Stud Group with three winners, and they're represented here by Conversion. Now, starter Bill Cooper is onto his stand, has a good look down the line, and now they're set and ready for the final race. Jenna Gala. Stands in nicely, so does Lanza. Off and running. Zubin, if anything, is a shade slow, and Governor Pete White out is about the first out. Themes jumped away smartly, so did Jinna Gulla. Rodeo Kid is scooting through into a handy posse, followed by Greenfield Star. Supergrass is not too far away when they get going, and then Priceless Asset. Special Express a little worse than midfield. Conversion getting well back, and Zubin, after that tardy start, is back. He's last at the 1,000 mark. Governor Pete, a clear-cut leader, led by two and a half to Themes. Rodeo Kid third, followed by Greenfield field star out deep as Jinna Gulla priceless asset in the yellow colors red sleeves red cap on the fence behind the leading pack then special express Lanza is midfield on the outside of supergrass well back conversion with dual hewer and Zubin as last as they come to the 600 meters mark governor Pete the leader by about a half length to themes Jinna Gulla's in third place on the fence Rodeo Kid Greenfield star in the center out deep in the orange cap is special express followed by Lanza who's only five off the lead on the inside Inside priceless asset followed by Supergrass as they turn the corner. Governor Pete just in front of Theme. Special Express on the outside is coming after them. Then Rodeo Kid followed by Greenfield Star and Lanza on the extreme outside. At the 200, Special Express went to the lead over Themes. Lanza is about to unleash on the outside. He's coming quickly. Special Express just in front. Lanza getting to him, but Special Express in front and one. Special Express by a long head to Lanza. Themes will get third, I think, in front of priceless asset. Greenfield Star and then Conversion Dual Hewer, Rodeo Kid Supergrass followed well back by Governor Pete and Zubin and tailed off his Jinna Gala. Special Express hanging on, ridden by Grant Cooksley. Well, what a big day for the Iceman. Four wins and two seconds on a seven event card. Grant's biggest day in a long time. Special Express $5.20 and $1.80. Second, Lanza, Carolyn Mason. I reckon he's run just ended, Lanza. 
He was going quickly enough 80 metres out to pick up that leader. He's run just petered out. Watch how quickly he makes ground here on Special Express. Now, priceless asset in there. See the yellow and black stripes, red sleeves, red cap. Does he run out of room here? Uh, early, early did. Oh, further back up the straight, Mick tells me he might have struck a bit of trouble. Themes will get third. Yes, uh, just petering out, I think, Lanza, as they come to the finish. And welcome back to uh, Alice Springs as the jockeys competing in this bike race are now uh, on the track. They're going to come out of the barrier stalls. We might be able to